Hey guys, so this is a really long one. I got it over the course of four hours and um, it's a time and trust is just the title, but there's a lot of little subheaders. So I'm gonna tell you um, each of the titles and then I'm gonna get into it. I am gonna say right now that this is gonna take me longer to record than I typically have time to record. So there might be different backgrounds. So I'm apologizing um, uh, up front if like it turns night or if I'm in a different outfit or whatever, because this is gonna take a bit. But this is what I got and here we go. So my patience wanes, the splendor of heaven, you are loved, extreme change, I speak, a new thing, ducklings, season of extremes, the prodigals, the children, time, and moving day. Okay, the first one. This world is what it is. Many choices have been made that affect the whole. None are how I would have preferred for my creation to live. Men's days are numbered. The end of this version of the earth nears. I was restrained with Noah and kept a few safe. I was restrained by Moses to continue on in the struggle with man. I sent my son who many embraced, but others have rejected. He brought my light and the way to me. My patience wanes though. As I see what happens behind closed doors, the deceit and the plans to harm my people and my creations. Although the number of wicked on the earth continually increases of late, this is how it has needed to go to get to this point. Rest assured, mine will be spared. You may feel like you are in the crosshairs soon, but my plan and provisions stand. I will keep mine in my perfect peace, no matter what the plans that the wicked man has in store. Number two, the splendor of heaven. This is to look forward to. You anointed and faithful that will soon come to train. You will be able to enjoy the benefits of heaven. I will refresh your weary and tired souls in deep ways. To take a breath of the pure air of heaven, imagine. You will be able to see family and friends who have gone before. Time is different here. What will seem a very small moment on earth of your being gone, you will have time to savor and rejoice here with me within the perfection of heaven. Be encouraged. These that lead will come here first and be refreshed before they need to lead. Those that come next in the rapture, you will also drink of the splendors of heaven. Yes, many of you will be sent back soon after you are raptured in man's time soon to help rescue the rebels. But for what seems but a quick time on earth, you will be able to savor and rejoice and enjoy. It will feel like a long time in heaven. You will be deeply refreshed. Those of you who feel weary, hold on. You will be here and refreshed soon. And when you return to work, you will be a new man completely changed in every way. Have hope, endure to the end. It does not matter which end. Some may die a natural death, others may be translated, others to be raptured, and others wait until the end when my son comes for judgment. Whichever end you have in front of you, stay motivated. Renew in me with worship, endure to the end. When you are remade with your new body and completed soul, there will be less need of sleep and food. Your body will heal very quickly. You will not get fatigued as you do now. Your strength will be supercharged with my power. You will have a perfectly designed body endure a little further. Your great reward and rest in restoration are near. Okay, third one. You are loved. I have formed you. I have kept my eye on you from the beginning. I knew the day you would turn to me. I knew the challenges you would experience. I knew which ones you would try to do yourself and which ones you would turn over to me. I knew at what point you would finally surrender. I know you better than anyone on earth. I know you better than you know yourself. I have seen every misstep and I have seen every effort in obedience. I love you. You are my child 
and I formed you. I see you in the form you will have to come. I see your potential. I see the blessings I have for you. I have so much perfect joy in store for you. Personalized details that you will love in your future to come. Be encouraged. I am the Lord God Almighty and I know what is coming. It gives me joy to reserve my gifts for my people. When this world is done and evil is contained and taken away, the best benefits will be brought forth. The gifts unimaginable. Always remember that I have what is best for you in mind. When you experience difficulties or disagreements, that is from the evil one. As soon as it occurs, pray that the evil forces that cause this be bound and put away from you. Pray to be released from the negative things that limit your joy, even on this earth. For mine, even on this earth, with all of its challenges, mine have the opportunity through prayer to be fully free, kept from harm and distractions. And eyes stayed on me. When you keep your focus on me, the gifts I give are joy and hope. This changes your every moment on earth. Pray for the powers of darkness to be cut down and kept away from you. Pray that my joy and hope are filled into you so that every moment you have left is merry and positive and light. Reject the notion that life is difficult. That is from the enemy. The difficult life is only for those that I have allowed to be sifted. For most, the difficulties are a result of perception and not being completely free of the influences of darkness and not resting fully in me. Keep your spiritual armor on. Suit up, pray up, walk in the Holy Spirit. This will lighten your steps and give you my joy and hope. This will also draw others to you because this is what my creation was made for. Humans are naturally drawn to others who have joy and hope. When you walk with me, you appear differently than those without me. This makes you become a beacon of interest and intrigue to those without joy and hope. Be my witnesses with your every step. Be walking beacons of joy and hope. This is the manifestation of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Walking lighthouses, able to share my light and my love with others. Spreading my hope of eternal salvation with all in your path. By doing this, you can change the world. Now and in the near future, when people's worlds begin to crumble financially and their material possessions perish, you can share my joy and hope and change lives. Begin now by cleansing yourself of influences that discourage and fill yourself with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with his empowerment, his imparting of joy, hope, and love. When you read my word, listen. What stands out? What convicts? What words jump out at you? This is one way to begin to hear the Holy Spirit guide. When you read, teach yourself to hear me. Begin with the Bible. Watch and listen. I am inviting you to change your life through my word and through you actually paying attention to what I am explaining to you as I read. Read my word. Hear me. My word is alive. Number four, the change will be extreme. Your perfection that I desire for you, mine will be changed. Mine will be walking in joy and hope eternally. Come to me. Leave behind your burdens. Leave your burdens behind. Surrender. I am here to restore you, starting now and forevermore. Number five, although you may not hear as the one before you does, I will speak to you and lead. I use mine in a variety of unique roles to play. The one before you hears me in a unique way. This is for the purpose to prepare my church to leave. She recites the words I give her for a large group of people. Each of mine have different roles. If your role is less public, you hear from me in a different way. When my words stop through the one before you, I will do a new thing. I will begin to speak to each of you who will listen. Heed my words. I am to keep you safe. Some of what you will hear will be simple to do. A call to prayer. A directive to stay indoors. 
a directive to go outdoors and to a specific place. But some of what I tell you to do will take faith. Some of what I tell you to do will take that moment where you must make a choice. You must decide if I am indeed to be believed. You will think in a split second and have to make a choice to follow or not. What I say might feel risky. Be reassured there is no risk. If I tell you to move, move and do not delay. It could be the difference of your life or the life of your family. Or it could be a test to see if you believe. Those with real belief, true faith, full faith in me will act on what I say when I say to act. Hear my voice, obey my words. You will see quickly that I provide for your benefit. And directives that seem to be risky in the moment were only for your good. Do not overthink it, just obey. This is how the anointed have been living. They have learned that in the free fall is where the miracles and blessings are. They have also learned that I do not fail. No matter how unlikely the request, I do not fail. I always have what is best in mind. Be prepared to jump when I say jump and trust me in the free fall. Then watch the miracles I can provide. The time to live out your faith is seconds away. Decide now that you will obey. Do not doubt. See that I instruct before it occurs. This is my way. Listen to the small, still voice. Clear out the chaos. Get alone with me. Give me your full faith and together we will save the world. You live in times that the whole church in all ages has hoped to see. You live in the times where the prophecies of old are finally occurring. You will see miracles and provisions that none of them could even imagine. Be blessed. You were chosen to live in such a time as this. You were destined for now. You were given your bumpy path in preparation for now. The doubts and the failures, the feelings of being unworthy, the feelings of being rejected by the world and the church, all of this comes to an end. All of this is set aside as stones that make a smooth path through the transitional time to come to heaven without death. See that you trust me. See that you will hear me. Those that hear me and obey will not have difficulties. Avoid difficult days ahead by determining now to listen and obey. Start today by reading my word and listen and observe what I bring forth to your mind. Get alone with me. I see your heart. Come to me. Pray something like this. Lord, please make a boundary of protection around me and my family and my property. Please block the evil ones from access to my mind, heart, and soul. Please send your mighty angels and release their full power to protect me and my family for your service. Do this every time you come before me. Do this any time you feel any negativity creeping into your mind. Do this any time you sense difficulties in your surroundings. Anything not of me. In this way, you can pray all day. No one else needs to know you are praying. This can take place very quickly in your mind in a matter of seconds. And those few seconds can radically change you and your ability to hear me, as well as your ability to be protected. Number six, I am the Lord God Almighty, and I am about to do a new thing. Stay in step with the Holy Spirit as he guides. He will give you directions from me. I see all things and I will bless and protect. Trust this. Often, if you read my words, I do things that seem illogical in man's thinking, but I always have a plan and purpose. Do not fret if you do not understand this, just obey. I am the one who can see all, trust me. You do not have to understand. You just have to act in faith and I will do the rest. You see the impossible mountain before you, but I see it as the anthill that it is. 
because if you allow me to carry you over it, it will barely seem to be a challenge. I see the victory. The forces of darkness encourage you to see the difficulty. Bind them. Do not listen to the deceptions. With me, nothing before you is impossible. With me, before you, the victory will be had with ease. Why? Because all you have to do is surrender it to me, and then I fight the battle. David took on more than a teen should logically have ventured to do. But because he surrendered it to me, he had success. Who do you suppose directed his arm and his stone to kill the giant before him? Me. Nothing before you is impossible if you lay it down in surrender to me. I will fight in your place and I cannot lose. This is the obvious secret and reality of mine that some have forgotten. I am the strength. Hand it over to me. Watch me work. Rest while I battle on your behalf. Fight on your knees. Pray and I will show up. I will make all things work together for good. Recall that this is the way I designed the system. I'm just waiting for you to give me the reins. Stop trying to be independent of me. Stop trying to control what you lack the skills to control. Give it over to me. I've got this. It's all in my hand. Number seven. I wish for you all to be like baby ducklings following along. Where I go, you go. Where I stop, you stop. If I go into deep water, you follow right behind. If I say it is time to feed or refresh in sleep, you eat or rest. Following along, be my baby ducklings. Learn to follow me. Number eight. The season of extremes is upon you. Men control things with their sciences to manipulate my creations. The extremes of heat, cold, whirlwinds, floods, excessive rain, extreme snows, and strong hurricanes, even earthquakes that man has planned are underway. This is man's doing. They aim at bringing financial stress upon the masses. They are wicked, evil, and cruel in that if some die from the extremes, they find this as a bonus. They aim to destabilize and depopulate. Pray protection over your area and watch my miracles. I will foil man's plans. I will protect my own. Help those around you who do not have my protections. Make your home a haven for me and I will bless this. Always care for your fellow humans. Share with them my love as the reason as to why you are being generous. It is rare in your isolated day that others share. Share. Be different. Be of hospitality. If I miraculously make your home protected from the extremes, talk of how the one and only Lord God Almighty protects and provides for those with true faith. Be my living examples of my love and provisions. When you hear a man blame me for the extremes, the extremes that man has placed onto his own people, be the voice that points out the provisions of God through the extremes as evidence that God would not put forth the extremes just to shelter a few because God loves all people and wants none to come to harm. If this leads to an opportunity to share of me, be sure to tell that God has a narrow gate and that all must come through his son, Jesus Christ, and all must be sanctified in him to enter heaven. Do not leave them in the confusion that the world is pushing on the populace, that God loves all in their sinful state, and man is the one who decides the standard for his own justification. This lacks love. Fulfill my message by giving the whole truth. It will only take a few seconds longer and although the person may not receive it well initially, I can cause that truth to make a change. I can bring back the words to their mind again and again until they are fully ready to surrender their old life. Recall this, most of the people you are to meet from here on out have the potential to be half-borns or hiders. 
a few words from you, a small positive interaction, some things shared in a time of need. All of these things coming from one that is filled with the Holy Spirit can change a life. One simple interaction, even though you may not see the benefits of it until you reach the wedding supper, when all will come together with Christ, now is the time to plant the seeds. The seed you plant may be watered by another and harvested by yet another. Plant seeds always. Be always testifying to my love and hope. Number nine, the harvest has begun. I will turn the prodigals first and I have already started. They have special skills. They understand the culture and they have much training in their upbringing in my word and in the ways of the church. I will turn the prodigals and make them a force for me in what is to come. The prodigals will bring mine to me when those are seeking salvation because they have trusted in man's lies. If you have a prodigal in your family, rejoice. Your prayers have been heard. The first wave of the harvest has begun. I have already started turning their hearts. I will not let any of them go. They will return to the joy of their salvation and be more impassioned than they were before to serve me. The time is here and will continue. Some of you will see this change. Others will be translated before it occurs. But trust that it will occur before the half-borns are called. See that I have armies already prepared and will be on the ground. That the enemy thinks are his. But when I drop the scales from their eyes and heart, they will return to me and be a force to be reckoned with. They will repent. I will forgive. They will work mighty feats and miracles. They will help mine in physical ways, and they will help mine to find me spiritually. They will have the needed skills that many faithful do not to reach the masses of their generation. They know the language and the culture of their people. Be blessed, those who have been praying for this, those that have been praying for their younglings that were raised for me and that had gone astray. I have heard you. It is done. The prodigals will come home and they will bring many others with them. Rejoice. Number 10, the children. There are many children in this generation. They know nothing of me. The time is coming when they will hear of me. Most will believe instantly. Their childlike faith will come to life. They will change the hearts of those adults around them. They will speak the obvious. They will encourage when to pray or when to run or when to stay for they will have heard it from me. They will hear my voice unhindered, not pressured by the standards of the world. There will be some children who will have been raised indoctrinated in deep wickedness. Some will turn to me and bring a revolution to those around them. Others will have the propinquity to continue in wickedness, and they will not hear my voice. They will reject it. All of the children, like all of the adults who believe in me, will be saved. If it is before the rapture, they will be raptured. Um, if they live amongst the wicked and they believe... This will disrupt the thinking of the wicked when their children disappear with all of the believers at the rapture. Some wicked will change as a result and believe because of this. Some will grow more angry and grow in hate. Few children will be here after the rapture, but the ones who are will experience the foretaste of the deep darkness. The ones who cry out to me, I will have been highlighted in public and they will have knowledge of me. So those that do cry out to me, I will send my teams to rescue them first. Because of their age, they will be set to safety in safe houses first. All who harden their hearts after the darkness, regardless of age, will have no potential to be saved. 
They will be making a willful choice to side with evil, and they have a taste for the wickedness. All wicked will go to the lake of fire eventually. This has always been known, and those that choose wickedness on the earth throughout all of time have always had this choice at some point in their life. The ones that stay in darkness love the evil one, but they each have had a choice to leave it. Those who love the evil are the ones that always stay. This is free will. These that believe the deceiver and cannot choose me when given the choice deserve the consequences of the evil one. This is just. All will be given a choice. Number 11, time. Time is a frustrating problem for humanity. It varies much from my view of time. This has caused much debate over the centuries. How long is a day? How long is a week? How long is a moment in God's time? In each generation, I have given a little more information to help understand my time. And your generation, those who have had the need to know for their next tasks, I have explained the deep mysteries of time and its inner workings, but this information is not for all of the masses, just for a few. The masses need to understand that my time is perfect, and I am in control of time. The masses need to trust me. All will occur. Your mind cannot see how my time works. But soon enough, the mystery will be ended. Fret not about time. Keep your gaze on me and listen and obey. That is what I require. Number 12, moving day. Everyone wants to learn when their moving day is. I have given clues, but most would like to know the exact day and moment that you will come to me. Recall how the process of moving goes even on earth. Long before the moving day, boxes are packed and labeled. The house is cleared and cleaned. The movers have been previously scheduled. The day approaching of moving is always preceded by a very busy time of work. Most moves also have a few events that trigger the need for flexibility or trust. The process of moving here is not that different. You are about to enter the busy time. This is evidence of a soon move. The boxes packed are the boxes filled with my gifts. Some you keep and some you will share. The contents of the boxes are safely packed and they are organized. Recall, I am a God of order and I have told you the busy time is ahead. When the busy time arrives, you know your move is near. The rhythm of life is like the rhythm of the end, the busy times and the need of flexibility and trust arise before the actual move to heaven. It will not be a random day out of the blue as some wish for you to think. There will be a feeling of its eminence before it comes. I will speak to you before it is your time. It will be a peaceful warning and it will come with directions. Do not be concerned of when. Know that as the rhythm picks up, that it is nearing and have confidence that I will tell. I will tell you personally. When you begin to sense that the end must be near, stay listening to me and I will let you know. Do not fear, I have every detail in the palm of my hand. Let go, surrender, let me lead, be my duckling, follow. I am the Lord God Almighty, rejoice. I speak these things before they occur. You hearing them is my invitation to listen to me and be led by me, the God of the universe. Listen, relax. That's it, I'm sorry for the strange, um, different backgrounds. My life is just a little nuts. And um, I hope this encourages you and I'll see you next time.